What's up guys in today's video. So I saw this video um, a couple of weeks ago and I was very interested in dissecting it because it was it was a conversation I actually wanted to have on YouTube. It had to do with corruption and the culture of corruption in Ghana and all the many effects that it has and how it plays and stuff like that. Now, this is a video on Joy99.7's Twitter, and it was a snippet from a whole um, interview with uh, Sam George. I didn't watch the full interview. I just saw the snippet, and it was very, very interesting to me. So I'm going to play it, and we are going to watch, and then I'm going to give my sentiments. You know, we, we're living in a political bubble where we blame politicians for being corrupt. But politicians are corrupt because of the people that we lead. Because the Ghanaian people are innately corrupt. The average Ghanaian is extremely corrupt. And has absolutely lost their moral fiber. And politicians are a reflection. We're a microcosm of the larger community. We're a reflection of the community and the people that we lead. So if you are, for example, a party executive... Okay, so um, I don't 100% agree with this. There's a, there's a lot of truth in what he's saying. Now, the truth in what Honorable Sam George is saying is that Ghanaians are corrupt. Like, corruption is ingrained in our society. And personally, I think corruption is now a cultural issue. It has traversed being a moral conversation. It's now a cultural conversation. As to why, I'll dive into that later. But when I say it's a cultural thing now, corruption is a cultural thing, I can say this confidently because if we're going to use our social studies um, definition of culture, culture is the way of life of a group of people. Now, if you take into consideration your way of life and the many, 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 many times you'd had to do something which on bare minimum was corrupt to be able to just do what you sh you should be able to do normally, then you can understand where I'm coming from in saying that corruption today is a cultural issue. Now, where I disagree with the Honorable Sam George is that I think it is an unfair allocation of blame, blaming the masses for corruption as opposed to sharing the blame of corruption with the politicians because what you need to understand or what we need to understand is that i i personally feel like corruption is in ghana is currently similar to or finding the source of um corruption is similar to finding the answer to the the chicken and the egg which one came first scientifically we know that the chicken had to come first before the egg came but I don't want to talk about that. I just want us to talk about the philosophical take of the chicken and the egg. Which one came first? Because we understand that it's such a, a cycle, it's a loop. All right. Now, the reason why I say that culture um, corruption in Ghana is in that loop is because something had to happen before corruption became so entrenched in our daily lives. Something had to have had to give it. And most often than not, it is something that happened in the powers that be. Some people say it was during um, former president, the late former president, Achampon's time, where there was this thing literally called Falto Beji Golf. I, I, till day, I don't really know what it was, but basically, I don't know. But some people say it was then. Other people I've spoken to say that corruption was exacerbated during the period of the famine in the 1980s in Ghana and because people had to scrounge anything that they could get their hands on to. It was, times were tough, times were hard, there was a lot of reforms, there was a lot of uh, scrutiny of so many things. So people's bids to survive resulted in them having to be corrupt because it put food on the table, kept food on the table. And that's the most interesting thing because I personally feel like Ghana's corruption has, like I said, is cultural. And this is because it puts food on the table. 
it's very sad to admit this, but on a day-to-day basis, there are several aspects of our daily lives that being corrupt, like if we are taking the um, the true definition of corruption, being corrupt facilitates those things at a faster pace than it typically would like it, it it typically would like let's say for instance you're stopped by the police if there was a ticketing system in ghana you know that okay i will stop they gave me my ticket i can keep it pushing and then i just pay the fine i uh, email uh, I, I i pay the fine and then I, I i go my way but here's a situation where there's not no such thing there's I, as far as i know there's no such ticketing system so you have to spend your entire afternoon dealing with a policeman who may or may not have caught you in the wrong. And it is what it is. <laughs> like, Charlie, you can't spend your whole day here because, you, like I said, you need to put food on your table. Now, that policeman is probably not paid that great. And he needs to put food on his table. So what happens? There's a meeting of minds, there's an agreement, there's a shaking of hands, and a passing, or otherwise. I'm not saying all policemen do it, but we, we've seen mentions of it enough to feel like it is a thing. But then you need to understand that this thing, it didn't, it didn't just pop out of nowhere. And like I said, if you ask me, I think it's the powers that be that cause these things to happen. Let's continue who sworn an oath to do party work. And part of your party work is to elect a leader for your party in your constituency. But you are deciding to give a bill to a person who is competent to pay before you would elect them. He would have to find the money. He doesn't have the money, so he will go to business interest and go and take the money from a businessman and come and pay to get elected. But when he gets elected and he's put in an executive position as a minister or a deputy minister and has to award a contract, don't forget that the business interest to give him the money is not Father Christmas. Even Santa Claus, you have to perform, be a good boy before he will give you a gift. So you do something before you get it. So that person gave you money for a reason. He's going to come back and come and take it in an inflated contract. And then you turn around and say that that minister is corrupt. Why, why is he corrupt? He's not corrupt. He's only paying for the money he advanced to you. It's a loan he gave to you. He's paying it back using your taxes. So this is true. Um, there are... Th- I have talked about this and I will be talking about this in a video I plan to do about the youth getting into politics. And it is about the fact that currently, to a certain degree, the gatekeeper of getting into politics is the paywall. There are so many things you have to pay to be able to even start contesting. And that's you pay an amount to start contesting. And when you do start contesting, you spend all manner of monies into campaigning and all that kind of stuff now if you are someone who actually has true love and passion for your community you actually want to help your community but you do not have the funds you have to get to somewhere now if you go to a business to forward you these funds there are terms and conditions as with any form of monetary transaction even if if you are going to take a load they tell you to bring um, um collateral so it's hand come, hand go, unfortunately. So you find uh, uh, we find ourselves in a situation where people with good intentions get tied up in certain contracts to the point where they end up having to do what we on the outside call um, corrupt or stuff like that. But then, but then the question now becomes, with this his with uh, the Honorable Sam George's illustration, the question then becomes: Should we? Not should should parties not have paywalls to people who are interested? Because now the interesting thing about a paywall is also the fact that a paywall is a sign of genuine interest. Because if there was no, no paywall, any uh, quote Tom, Dick, and Harry would rise up that I want to run for this electoral position. Now, if every Tom, Dick, and Harry is running for this, sometimes a paywall serves as a filter. To show those who are truly dedicated and those who are. But un- unfortunately, 
that paywall or that filter comes with its extra baggage because if you are truly dedicated and you do go find that money, you might have entered some deals that you would be very tired, uh, you'll have your hands tied in the future. So like I said, it's a very chicken and egg situation. So I think it's a very unfair allocation of blame. I think politicians are corrupt because they are corrupt. And I think the people of Ghana are corrupt because we are corrupt. I think that's a better, I don't think politicians are necessarily a reflection of the microcosm because I personally think that sometime in the past, politicians were the cause or were a part of the cause of uh, corruption be coming alive. I'll, I'll give another illustration, but let's continue. So the problem of our country is the fact that every facet of our life is saddled with corruption, even okay. outside of politics, because ah, your DJs, I'm not saying multimedia, but DJs across board. Somebody's an up and coming artist, that song, play payola. If you don't play payola, they won't play your song. You go to a hospital, you have to go and get your file. The person is sick and dying. Give the person his file. Unless you put 5 CD or 10 CD in the thing, your file will not come out. You go to a parking lot, you want to park. Security man who is paid so, to do his job. So unless Sam, you give him 2 CDs, you won't get a place to park. Sam, Imagine that person is now a minister. So, did you have to do that to also uh, get elected? Are you asking me if I've ever paid money to people when I'm going to get elected? In fact, obviously, that's what you're trying to say. I mean, you're, you're justifying it. No, no, Nanka, how did you think I, you think I didn't, you think I was sitting and tell you I didn't pay? I paid. They paid more than me, but I paid. I paid less than them, but still I won. How much did you pay? When they, be brave, different. There are those who get 100 CDs, those who get 200 CDs, those who get 500 CDs. It's level by level. Monkeys play by sizes. <laughs> I wouldn't lie about it. I see. Because, the, because, at, at because time, it's the reality. Okay. So, like he illustrates in this video, every single facet of our lives on a daily basis has been marred or tainted with a need for, a need to be corrupt. Because it's, it's a necessity of both sides. Because the system isn't working. Because there are certain situations where you pay for an expedited version of something or you've paid for, um, let's say, um, a higher tier of something, but you end up receiving pretty much the same service as if you hadn't paid. There's a reason why you paid that money, but you don't get it. But if I pay, the, I, I, that's paying the institution. But if I slip the individual I'm dealing with on personal level, I slip them something, I get a much better experience, even if I paid for what I, we would attest to be the lower tier. And this is simply because I need to get what I need done, done as quickly as possible and as best as possible. And on the opposite end, the person is probably, you guessed it, not paid enough. So we have a clash of interests and it just, like I said, meeting of minds, shaking of hands, passing of stuff, agreement, and then we keep it pushing. And it's, it's, it's sad because now almost everything you do you have to kind of contend with that. And it's very sad. I have had my fair share of um, corrupt experiences. Everybody in this country has had their fair share of uh, corrupt experiences. So it is it is sad. I actually wanted to talk about this video when I saw it, simply because I wanted to say that we need to realize as a country that corruption is now a cultural issue. It's no longer a moral issue. And with it being a cultural issue, it's an aspect and a driving force of our day-to-day -day lives. It affects us on a day-to-day -day basis, and it is a part of everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So if we want to fight corruption, think about it as fighting a cultural, or, or, you know, or in, instilling a cultural change. That is not done easily. <laughs> it's not easy. I say all this to say that so if anybody comes to tell you that my manifesto I'm going to fight corruption I think you should take a pause and listen to what they have to say thoroughly to find out if they do understand what is going on because like I said the overhaul required personally the personal when you ask me personally the overhaul required to change corruption in this country to turn it from being a cultural thing to just becoming a moral thing is an upheaval of the entire system that is gone. <laughs> that is not going to be easy.
but we hope to prevail. So jump in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, do you think corruption is just a moral situation? Do you think that there are ways to easily combat corruption? Do you agree with Honorable Sam George? Do you disagree with him? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you have anything else to say? As always, jump in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, we go cross, Charlie. Peace.